the intro video, I told you guys a little bit about my Black History Month trauma, and now certain memories are starting to resurface. I had to have been in about the sixth or seventh grade, and my school took us on this overnight field trip to President Thomas Jefferson's house in Virginia. This big palatial home with a tree-lined walkway sat on top of a hill, and it was a plantation where the president enslaved hundreds of black people. So yeah, the school took us on a field trip to a plantation. And I remember during the lunch break, they even let you volunteer to go outside and pick cotton if you wanted to see what it was like. But there was also a mention of a woman named Sally Hemings. But today, if you go to Monticello, what the plantation was actually called, you'll see that there's a whole exhibit dedicated to Sally Hemings. Back then, not so much. They told us that Sally Hemings was Thomas Jefferson's mistress, and they were in love, and they had six children together. So my innocent middle school mind assumed that Thomas Jefferson, a founding father of the United States, couldn't have been a racist because he was with Sally, right? Wrong, wrong, wrong. That's like saying a dude couldn't be a chauvinist because he has a mother, daughters, and sisters. There aren't any actual pictures of Sally, but her father was a plantation owner named John Wells. Remember that name and her mother was an enslaved woman. One personal account describes Sally as mighty near white with long hair down her back. And just to be clear, an enslaved woman having sex with her captor is not consensual, it's rape. And going forward, that's what I'm gonna call it. Sally Hemings was Thomas Jefferson's property. She was having sex with him as a means to survive. No matter how you slice it, President Thomas Jefferson was abusing his power, just like a lot of men did during those times. And in an effort to appease their wives, children, and the public, the black enslaved women that were being raped by their owners were being painted as simple-minded, oversexed bed wenches. Hmm, the hypersexualization of black women's bodies. You mean our generation didn't start that? <gasps> And if you still want to think Thomas Jefferson was not an abuser, Sally was 16 and he was 44 when she gave birth to their first child. Many people believe that he began raping her in France, which is where he stayed for a while because he was serving as the ambassador. And if you still choose to focus on all the good stuff that he did while ignoring this little stuff that I'm talking about, you probably still bop to R. Kelly. Not surprisingly, Sally Hemings and Martha Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson's wife, had the same father. After their father died, Sally, considered property, was willed over to Martha, who was married to Thomas Jefferson and served on their plantation as a slave. And so when she was old enough, Thomas Jefferson started raping his wife's half-sister. And despite DNA tests done on Thomas Jefferson's confirmed descendants, me and millions of other people find it quite odd that Jefferson never gave freedom to any other nuclear enslaved family. Those were his kids. Those were his kids. Don't be dumb. When Thomas Jefferson died in 1826, Sally Hemings stayed on the plantation for two more years, which gave her time. You see, back then, Virginia law allowed freed black people one full year to get out of Virginia. Basically, if we can't keep you in chains, you gotta go. Now, it should be noted that in his will, Thomas Jefferson left instructions for Sally Hemings to be allowed to stay on Monticello Plantation and for his six children with Sally Hemings to be allowed to stay in Virginia. When Sally Hemings left Monticello Plantation, with no money, no education, and no ability to survive on her own because of all the years of rape and stealing her labor. When she left Monticello Plantation, Sally Hemings moved to Charlottesville, Virginia with her two sons. In 1835, Sally Hemings died. She was 62 years old. Fun fact, you guys know I love fun facts. So there was a film made in 1995 called Jefferson in Paris, and basically it told about this burgeoning, beautiful love story between Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings while he was serving as a United States ambassador to France. Nick Nolte starred as Thomas Jefferson, and Dandy Newton, who later wore blackface and a prosthetic nose when she was playing Nina Simone, a role that she probably should have turned down, played Sally Hemings. Jefferson in Paris was a huge flop, criticized for painting one of the biggest crimes in world history as a date night movie. I'm done, I'm done. If you're interested in more of this story, I suggest that you go and do some of your own research, but I'll see you guys tomorrow. Because I'm black and I'm black. Yo, I'm black and I'm black, y'all. And I'm black and you're black and I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm black and you're black.